You know, I was riding in this morning, and I was listening to the radio, a little talk radio, a little podcasting, and uh, reminded me. I've gotten several complaints over the last couple of days, people saying that they can't hear, they're not, the Apple podcast is not updating on the show. I don't know what's going on. It's an Apple issue, not a Clay Edwards issue. It works fine on mine, but what people are seeing that works, a couple of things too. The app does not just automatically update when you close it and reopen it. You got to pull down, like pull the screen down and re- reload it. Uh, some people have had to unsubscribe and resubscribe and boom, there's the updates. So if you've been listening on, on Apple Podcasts, which it is our largest uh, provider or a- a- iTunes or app app, <laughs> app app, podcast app. Uh, so that should that should fix any issues you may or may not be having with the app there. Man, this pollen it's getting, it's getting to me a little bit. Throat's been swollen. Eyes are heavy. Maybe I should just get some sleep. Anyway, I was coming in this morning, and I was just thinking about this TikTok thing, and I'm not going to beat y'all up about it much today. It's we'll, 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 we'll reevaluate it when it gets back to the Senate, but I do have a couple thoughts on it. And I got a couple thoughts on bipartisanship. And I've got a new name for Michael Guest, Meta Mike. Meta Mike and our other three congressmen here in Mississippi all voted unanimously to destroy American content creators and businesses' incomes and businesses yesterday to protect Facebook, YouTube, and more. Instagram, Meta, all of that. And they there's, there's bipartisan clay. Everybody, everybody agrees this is good for America to ban TikTok or to force them to divest and sell to another one of these big companies. Like, I don't know, who would have enough money? TikTok's worth about $260, $70 billion. Who would have enough money to buy TikTok? Clay's going to be good for us. Jeff Bezos, Amazon, does Amazon buy it? They don't own a social media company. Yeah, Amazon's never proven to that they can do things right. Oh, what about Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook and Meta? Just go ahead and give them the whole damn monopoly. Remember when they broke up the bales back in the day? We've broken up companies for this. There's there's companies that we do not allow to merge because they'll create monopolies. But for some reason, it's okay in big tech and social media. Google and YouTube should not be allowed to, to exist. Anyway, back to this bipartisan thing. Used to when you saw bipartisan. You're like, man, this must be really good for America. When 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 these when they can get along and they we can all agree that something is either good or bad for us, we've got great leadership. Man, they're really making the tough to sit. One side had to fold because they know it's what's for the best. Actually, you didn't even look at it like that back then. You looked at it, this is an issue. This is something so good that we got to do it. It almost reminds me of the Patriot Act. <clears throat> now when I see bipartisan, I like we are all screwed when these clowns on both sides come together and agree on something, there's only one loser. It's us cuz they all won and we lost. So Excuse me if I'm not as excited or I'm not biting down on the, oh, yeah, man, we got to keep China from getting our data. What do you think China wants with your data? I'm just real, real question here. 
I still I fear the I fear the California communists who proven to me what they what they do to us during COVID. They had no problem cranking up the tyranny. I have no, I have no problem with with uh, comparing them to Chinese communists. <laughs> What's the hell? I mean, just sometimes it's too stupid to be stupid, as I like to say. And I, now look, all of y'all that are like, Clay, China's our greatest enemy. Joe Biden's already in China's back pocket. But here, here's my thing. If you're worried about China having your data, you're going to have to start cutting some things out of your life. You know, there's an American company that gave China all your data. That a lot of y'all like to use. They, they, they want it in the Chinese market so bad that they had to agree to give China access to all their data. So if you're out here and you're getting ready to go out of town this weekend and you book an Airbnb, just know they gave China your data. Now are we forced an Airbnb to sell. There's a lot of hypocrisy going on here. We're fighting out there authoritarianism with authoritarianism. And I think that we're going to look back and we're going to compare this to the Patriot Act. <clears throat> I mean, take my take the fact that I'm going to lose a big chunk of my income if they don't figure out a way to divest and not screw up the, the payouts. Take that out of it. What's next? It's to me, it's clear. You protect Meta and Facebook by forcing the sale or banishment of TikTok. They've both been trying to figure out how YouTube has has gotten into the shorts business. Instagram and Facebook have gotten into the reels business. This is all for you out there that don't keep up with social media. This is all the little short form narrow videos, minute, minute and a half long. Ever since TikTok blew up and became the number one social media platform in the world, everybody else has been playing catch up. So you help the California communist. By allowing them to buy it, one of them, or you neuter TikTok, one or the other, and lost my train of thought. <laughs> I've been I've been so fired up about this for the last two or three days, and I've talked myself into circles about it so many times. Then I about lost my train of thought on it. So I'll come back to that. Let's go back to the bipartisan thing. And kind of where I was going and met a mic. Hey, it happens to the best of us. Or worst of us, depending upon your perspective. Michael Guest had no problem getting Santos kicked out of Congress. Do y'all realize that now... With that guy that's retiring, that's decided not to finish his term in Colorado, is it Ken Buck? With him deciding not to finish his term, we now have, we're now two people away from Hakeem Jeffries being the Speaker of the House. If something weird was to happen, You could end up with Hakeem Jeffries as the Speaker of the House. They already have, the the Democrats already have the Senate. You have a lame duck president. You have basically a lame duck Senate and, and House. You could anyway, after November. 
the legis the, the the terrible stuff they could push through there could just be the most could be generationally crippling for this country. But man, you know, it was like we, we, we had to make sure Santos got out of there. And a yet to be proven guilty individual was found guilty in the court of Michael Guest Ethics Committee without being found guilty of a crime yet. Make it make sense. Who's the guy? Y'all can help me on the Guns of Gear text line, 769-241-1944. The Democrat that had all the gold lined in his jackets and clothes. No talk of him resigning. No talk of him being fired from Congress. The Senate, whichever side. But our Mississippi values guy, Meta Mike, had to make sure that we got down one more guy, one more vote. We're two away from the Democrats having full control of this country. They're trying their best to get a, to, I think I called him Adam Gates the other day. They're trying their best to get rid of Matt Gates. All as a revenge plot for unseating Kevin, what's his name, as, as lead Speaker of the House. These people do not give a damn about America. They do not give a damn about you. You damn sure don't care about me. People, you got to wake up. I walked in that, I walked in there to vote the other day. Voted for Trump. Voted for Gannon. Burton. And I got down there on the bottom. Frankly, I forgot the guest was even on the ballot this time around. Nobody, there was, nobody primaried him. I wrote my name. I wrote my name in. I was like, no, nah, I, I, I ain't, I ain't co-signing on this again. Yeah, I'm not going to co-sign on it in November. The, I mean, I heard Kim Wade talking about it yesterday. The Democrats normally would just warm, run a warm body to have on the ballot just in case the guy, the candidate dies or something. They, they may get lucky. Man, apathy is set in here. Let's take a break. This is the Clay Edwards Show. Guns and Gear text line 769-241-1944. The phone line this morning if you want to call in 601 879 Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. Hey guys, this segment brought to you by our friends over at iGear Optical in Pearl, Mississippi. And yeah, my girlfriend I had to call him yesterday. She uh, got an eye appointment. She's going to get over there and get her a pair of glasses here soon. Said uh, She talked to Bruce. Said, very, very nice fella. Hey, look, Iger Optical will never hand out glasses like, the, like it's a box of shoes. Bruce is going to adjust your frames before taking measurements and then a second time after the lenses have been installed when you pick them up, you know, just to get it fine-tuned and personalize it for you a little bit. Uh, Bruce is going to ask you a lot of questions. Going to figure out the best lens for you, just the right amount, just the right amount of technology uh, to take care of all your wants and needs. Bruce will also help you select the right frames for maximum comfort, durability, and style that fits your needs. Hey, I said this the other day when I was talking about them. You just go buy a pair of sunglasses, and man, it, it, they want they don't have to feel like they're tight or wrong on your nose. You could think, oh yeah, this fits nice and snug, and next thing you know, you got a migraine. Well, you can just take a pair of sunglasses off, but if you actually need a pair of optical lenses, um, that's a bad situation to be in. Your 
so your your reading glasses or your visual gla- your optical glasses causing you to have headaches, you're going to avoid that with Iger Optical. Iger Optical is not an insurance because they want to help you deal with. Uh, they want to help to deal with you instead of having an insurance company telling them how to take care of you. You got any questions? Reach out to them. I said, Iger Optical. We fit glasses for you, for your lifestyle and your budget. Get your vision in high gear today. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Saturdays, 10 to 2. Located at 2630 Highway 80 East in Pearl, Mississippi. Check them out online. It's always the easiest way to get started nowadays. iGearOptical.com. iGearOptical.com. As I like to always mention here, locally owned, locally operated Go in there and speak to the boss man yourself, or himself, should I say. Bruce, right there at Iger Optical in Pearl. Good folks, man. We appreciate having Bruce and the team on board here. All right. We were talking about this bipartisan nonsense and this old Twitter thing. I, I, just want, you, I, I want to paint a picture for y'all. You know, Jameson and Kim have been on have been on this Mike Guest thing for a while here, and I you know, I live out there. I'm in his district. I, I don't live three minutes from Mike. You know, cross paths a lot. A lot of mutual acquaintances, friends, all that stuff. I'm like, eh, you know, I try to compartmentalize the person from the congressman. Because he's always respectful to me. But I find all this wildly disrespectful. And, and kind of tired of playing nice neighbor. I mean, I we didn't send you to Washington, D.C. to ever agree with Nancy Pelosi, ever. There's not a single thing that you should be on the same side as Nancy Pelosi. I'm going to play a little Nancy Pelosi video right now just to reaffirm that this is from yesterday. Well, bear with me, hold on. Hey. You would think three years into this, I'd figure out the right button to hit. And a woman is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I thank the gentleman for yielding and for his leadership on this very important issue. And I thank the distinguished chairwoman uh, of the Energy and Commerce Committee and associate myself with her remarks, as well as with Mr. Pallone's. I thank Mr. Christian Morphy and Mr. Gallagher, Chairman Gallagher of the Select Committee uh, on China, for their great leadership bringing this legislation forward. Uh, to the Committee of Jurisdiction, Legislative Jurisdiction. It's, Mr. Chair, I have a few points to make, uh, and it's interesting. To- what in the hell has she just said? Has she said a single word yet or finished a complete sentence or train of thought? To hear this respectful debate. First of all, this is not a ban on TikTok. I'm a grandmother of teenagers. I understand the entertainment value, the educational value, the communication value, the business value for some business on this. This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Tic-tac-toe. A winner. Tic-tac-toe. And here's what I have to say. The people of China have come forth. The Tibetans have come forth and said on TikTok in China they are suppressed They cannot put their message out. Not only that, the Chinese government misrepresents the situation in Tibet. In Hong Kong, well, let me just tell you about Hong Kong. During the Taiwan election, TikTok, TikTok into Taiwan that the Uyghurs, on whom there is a genocide exercise by the Chinese government, they have told the people in Taiwan that the Uyghurs like that genocide. And and they told them that the people of Hong Kong like the destruction of their democracy. They don't frame it that way, but that's their message. And again, suppressing the communication from Tibet. And then just people yesterday on the steps, we heard from the Taiwan people, we we heard from the Tibetans, we heard from the Hong Kong, and we heard from a woman whose husband was arrested because of his communication with somebody with a shared view. So... This is controlled by the Chinese Communist government. But forgetting that, if you can, I can't, think of this. Ladies' time has expired. The Chinese government will control the algorithm. They can change it any time coming into the United States. They had not had a problem with the Chinese controlling the algorithm until now. 
I mean, I think I think TikTok is a vile thing, but I think I feel just as equal about Instagram, Facebook, the old Twitter. How about just not allowing any of these Chinese companies into America? We are, so you know, like our companies are not allowed over there, like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. I got to quit doing that. It's it's called X. If y'all don't know by now that Twitter changed its name to X, shame on you, X. They're not allowed to operate in China. But Chinese companies are allowed to operate in America. But we're only going to sit here and single out TikTok. Is it is Timu not obligated to potentially share their data as well? I mean they're coming out here just inching closer and closer and closer and taking bigger bites out of Amazon's pie. They're a Chinese company. Are they, again, I'm going to ask the question again. Is Timu not allowed to potentially share our data? Or what about the, again, what about the American companies that whore themselves out to China and share their, and share our data with them, like Airbnb. That's okay. Facebook has some of the largest lobbying firms, Meta. Meta Mike, guest, good buddy Mark Zuckerberg. Has some of the largest lobbying firms in Washington. And I don't mean like a firm in Washington. I mean in the capital. Some of the largest amount of lobbyists representing them. This is overwhelmingly something that was pushed by those lobbyists to create unfair competition or an unfair advantage, should I say. Eliminate competition for Facebook and Instagram. But Timu's good. That's just the first thing that comes to mind. How about all these Chinese made products we have here? I just, this is just so hypocritical. I'm sorry. If I deleted my TikTok today and said, screw it, I would feel the same way tomorrow that I feel today. You got Mike Guest and all these other Mississippi Congress people. The other three, of course, Benny, I knew Benny, Boom Boom Thompson was going to vote this way. Then you got the other two from North Mississippi and South Mississippi. Ezel and the other guy. All voting for this. They voting with Nancy P.P. Pants Pelosi. Let's take a break. This is the Clay Edwards Show. We'll be right back. I am nowhere near through ranting about this. We're gonna talk about our. We're gonna talk about our Mississippi legislature, legislation, legislators. When I come back, and and and, and this time it doesn't involve anything to do with body shots and waitresses.